Hey Minecrafters, Nick here with episode 7 of my Minecraft world tour. And I know what you're thinking, I know. You're thinking this video's late, and you're just being lazy, you're not getting your videos out on time. This is just like last time you tried to do videos. And, well, it's it actually is a little bit different this time, guys. Uh, what had happened, <laughs> what had happened was, I did a, a Windows 10 update. You know, Windows 10 just tries to update your machine, wants to get bug fixes, you know, critical vulnerabilities patched, that sort of thing. Uh, but instead of making my, my machine, you know, more stable and faster, uh, the Windows update failed. And it uh, left my machine in an unbootable state. So I was just, uh, I was dead for a week there. I, I couldn't do anything. I had to reformat, reinstall, uh, reload my data, reload my applications. Uh, and it was a, a bit of a pain and kind of scary because I had thought that I'd, I'd lost all my Minecraft data. Uh, but luckily I managed to recover it. So I'm in a better place now and I'm fairly happy because one of the one of the things that changed uh, this time around, instead of going with my old recording software, which was Fraps, uh, I've decided to bump up to OBS. And I've got to say, OBS, I'm very, very pleased with at the moment. It, it seems like it's very well written software. It loads quickly. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not terribly hard to use. Uh, and another bonus is it seems to do a better job of picking up the audio from the mic. I don't know what the deal was with Fraps and why the audio from it always seemed to be a little bit quiet and muted. Um, you know, I did mess around with my microphone levels uh, when using Fraps, but I found that if I turned uh, the gain on the microphone up loud enough uh, to be heard over the game very, very clearly, uh, you could just hear every single little background noise uh, that went on. You know, you'd, you'd hear laundry machines in the background or uh, crows squawking outside. Um, and, you know, the keyboard and the mouse clicking away, uh, and that always bothered me, so I tried to turn down the, the gain a bit uh, and just sort of balance that, but uh, I did have a number of people complaining that uh, my voice was too too quiet in prior recordings. So, hopefully OBS is going to do a better job for me here, it, it seems to be, uh, and also the machine seems to be running a little bit quicker because it's just, it's a very, very fresh install. And anyway, so here, today, here we are. Uh, back at the OP slime farm, I'm just kind of standing here watching some slime get dragged up through the little slime pit. Uh, and the reason why I'm here is just because uh, <laughs> I haven't been able to play and I haven't actually moved from this position since the last video I did. So, here we are. And today I think what I want to do is I want to show off something a little bit different. At, uh, another kind of farm. Uh, this one will be uh, Prismarine Farms. And I, I should probably start off... Uh, I should probably start off back at the base, just just for one sec, because I want to show you something. This is this is something that I had done a long, long time ago uh, at my base, and this is the main base over here. Uh, I know I haven't really showed off the main base in this most recent series of videos, but I will do that at some point. Uh, and what I'm going to do right now is just come in here, and I want to go downstairs to the old trophy room. Uh, this used to be my trophy room, and it became sort of, uh, you know, a multi-purpose room. I've got a little Pico Gigahertz farm here. Uh, I've got my continuous auto brewing system there. Uh, slightly modified. This one I, I modified, hoping to make it better, but it actually made it worse. So so don't do this. If, you, if you've seen the tutorial for the continuous auto brewing system, uh, just go with what's there, because this one, you cannot interact with the brewing stand. Uh, and I don't like that as much. I like just being able to walk up to the brewing stand and, and brew things manually if I have to. But anyway, this is what I wanted to show you here. Uh, when I first made this base, uh, just outside here, there's a little sort of water wall. And that was because I just kind of kept on digging, you know, down below until I hit water. And then I thought to myself, well, you know, why don't I have a door that I can kind of go in and out through uh, just sort of a water curtain here. And all I did was put down a row of half slabs uh, just to stop the water from flowing in and it seemed to work really well. And over time I noticed that you would get squid forming in the river here and they'd sometimes swim up to the water wall, come through and fall and just land here on these half slabs. So what I did is I put a row of hoppers underneath the half slabs and I noticed that I got a lot of ink sacs over time. Uh, you know, it's not a, not a huge amount here, especially because this is a pretty small, uh, you know, small sort of water curtain or water wall, however you want to say it. Uh, but uh, and I have put some magma blocks in here to make just interesting noises. But anyway, that's uh, that's kind of how I I came across the idea of doing a water wall to to get ink. 
And so now we can go over uh, to our very first Prismarine farm. This is the first one that I found and made on this, this Let's Play. Uh, it's, it's a fair ways away, uh, and I found it by looking for uh, a flower biome because I wanted to get some dyes and, you know, grow some flowers. And so I found a flower biome, uh, and near it was the Sea Temple. So we're going to just go up here a little bit, uh, because there's a hole in the wall. You can see that ladder there. That leads to the, the tunnel that goes to the Sea Temple. So we're just going to hop off the elevator here, and we're going to jump out right here, and then head straight to the first Prismarine farm. Now, this one is what I call the OP Prismarine Farm, and I know I say OP an, uh, an awful lot, um, but that's just because this one, it really is overpowered. It, it's like the slime farm, it's just overpowered. Uh, this particular farm was designed by the guys at the Zip Crowd uh, a number of years ago. I'm, I'm talking three, four years ago, uh, and if I remember correctly, I think that they said that the, the rates you can get from it if you have a, a perfect perimeter done, you know, if, if you use something like MC Edit just to remove a big chunk of the world, uh, you know, around the Sea Temple, then you can get about about 100 to 110,000 items an hour with it. And after I built this one, I've clocked this version out at about, I don't know, somewhere between 90, 95,000 uh, items an hour. And look, there's a little zombie pig man just... Why are you here? Why are you guys always here hassling me when I'm trying to do videos, huh? Why do you do it? Why, you little pig face zombie? Okay, so here we are. We're going to go through this little portal and get to the OP Prismarine farm. And as I say, it's a zip crowd design. Uh, slight modifications for me because I don't like doing things exactly the way that everybody else does. You know, I don't like to take designs and just implement them exactly. I always like to make it, at least some changes to them uh, just to make them sort of my own. And as you can see, this is not exactly the same as the, the zip crowd did it. I, I did put a water wall all the way around. It took a little bit of doing, uh, and that's just so I can get ink sacs. You know, these guys, when you're close to them, they'll start swimming. We're a little far down right now, but uh, I do have a rail line that's hidden just underneath that line of hoppers. Uh, and so what that does is it, it just, when you get close, these guys begin to swim. They fall through the water wall, land on the half slab, suffocate, and their little ink sacs go into this line of hoppers that go all the way around and get inserted into the storage system. So, just to see this farm in action, I usually keep this farm turned off because I've noticed that I can lose minecarts if I leave this running when I sort of zone out of the area. So the first thing we do is we turn on the collection, and that just sends all of those carts back and forth uh, from the front to the back, you know, just collecting up whatever's there. And of course there's nothing there right now, but there will be in just a few seconds because all we have to do is hit this button to toggle the guardians. Now. It's going to take just a second or two. You can see the little bit of frame rate lag as the water fills. And there you go. Here comes the, the guardians falling down. And I don't have a perimeter done. Uh, not precisely. This is, this is just sort of uh, a sea temple that's in a pretty big ocean. And there's a couple of islands around that are, you know, within about 100 blocks or just at the edge of about 100 blocks. So they're almost out of out of range to to affect this farm but I did look around underneath the ocean and try to find as many caves as I could and I lit them up and I think the rates here are actually pretty good you know I, I'm getting like I say somewhere above 90,000 items an hour uh, to the best of my you know ability to sort of calculate it out or guesstimate it uh, and yeah so it, it's it's a good farm uh, it was well designed uh, the only complaint that I had about the design of it was that there was way too many uh, dispensers that were required. And when I built this farm, uh, there was no nice interface uh, as there is now with the crafting interface where you can just, you know, select what you want uh, and have it made sort of automatically. You had to go off and gather the materials, put them in a crafting bench, and craft. And of course, on the Java edition, uh, when you want to craft a dispenser, it doesn't take a little bit of health off uh, the bow that you use. It, it takes the whole bow. Uh, and of course, bows don't stack, so it was really painful to make hundreds and hundreds of dispensers. So I, I made a couple of changes to the design just to reduce the number of dispensers that were there. Uh, you know, I came up with a water wall and did my little squid collection and, you know, put in some little guardian eyes. You know, I tried to make this my own, make it a little bit different. 
Uh, but I did want to follow the general guidelines from the, the guys at Zip Crowd because I wanted to to make a farm. Uh, you know, when I did this, I wanted to make a farm that was really, really efficient and gave me loads and loads of items. So I did that, and yes, <laughs> this farm really does work well. You do get lots and lots of items. Uh, as you can see, these things are kind of going up in stacks. And if we go down below, we can take a look at how the collection works and what's going on. Now, the first thing we should probably do is just run over here, and you can see that all these minecarts just run directly underneath the glass, uh, and they are able to pick up blocks, uh, you know, or pick up um, things just one block above them. So, you know, as a minecart comes by here, all these guys will disappear because they're getting sucked into that minecart, and then they'll they come all the way back and they get delivered into some hoppers at the end here. And these hoppers really just go into dispensers. Uh, that fire all of these items out into a water stream. You know, they, they go through here into a couple of chests and then they get spat out, you know, dispensers here that have uh, clocks, you know, so that when there's items in there, the clocks run and they spit out all the items. Uh, both sides kind of meet in the middle here. Uh, this used to be important. Is that a slime? Why is there a slime down here? Erg! I'm being attacked by things I don't want to be attacked by. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in the beginning, this was important, trying to get items to join together to sort of reduce the number of entities that were, uh, you know, hanging around in the game, just because there's there's a lot of entities here, and it will slow things down. And originally, I had a, a different item elevator here, and then a Minecraft update came along, which broke item elevators uh, done the old way. So I decided to go with just an Ilmango flappy door design here, uh, and... Really, I just did that because I wanted something uh, quick and easy to build just to fix the farm. Uh, because, you know, once you've got something built and you've you've had it run for a while, uh, if an update comes along and, and breaks it, you know, you just want to get it fixed as quickly as possible. You don't necessarily want to sit down and think about uh, nice designs yourself. So I just, I went with the, the typical Ilmango flappy door design here with the, the sort of signal extender so that it, it doesn't close too soon and all that good stuff. But as you can see, uh, a lot of items just kind of come in here, they get grouped up, and then they get fired up the elevator by the flappy door. And this flappy door, yes, it's going to break in version 1.13, so I'm going to have to do this again. It's uh, that's one of the things that's painful about Minecraft, is that every time they come up with an update, you know, they, they change the way that pistons work just a little bit, or they change uh, something that manages to break a bunch of machines for a bunch of people. Uh, and that's that's kind of painful, but uh, you know it, <laughs> it's just the way it goes. You just have to, if you want to play Minecraft, you got to get used to the fact that things are going to break when they come out with new versions. Uh, so here we are. We're looking at all the goodies fall down. There's a lot of guardians here, lots and lots and lots of guardians. And you can see a couple of those squid are almost falling through, but now they've stopped swimming. Oh, but they're getting zapped. Uh, if I want those guardians to swim and fall through the the sort of water curtain that we have there. What I did is I set up a little minecart uh, just over here. And this minecart, as I say, it's just underneath the line of hoppers. And if if I can find the minecart, I don't know where it is. Which way is better to go? Is it going this way or that way? I can't tell. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we hop in the minecart. You just kind of sit back. And what's happening right now is that you're getting close to the edge where all of those squid um, begin to swim. And once they begin to swim, there's a chance that they'll fall through the water wall and then, you know, land on the half slabs and give up their ink sacs. So that's that's why I did this. I just wanted to be able to get ink sacs because there's no point in having a prismarine farm that doesn't help you to make dark prismarine blocks. Uh, you know, I wanted to be able to make all of the prismarine, and that's uh, that was that was important to me. I, I could never understand why people would make a prismarine farm that didn't give you ink sacs. Because without the ink sacs, you can't make dark prismarine. And as you can see, um, this is, has gone fairly well over time. Uh, the ink sacs come in a lot more slowly than anything else in this farm, because this farm just produces thousands, I mean tens of thousands of items uh, an hour, nearly a hundred thousand. And just to sort of show you how much has, has come through since we started the farm, because uh, as you can see here, there's, you know, things are still falling. We've still got the guardians coming down. Uh, they're just, they fall straight down. They take enough fall damage to die and just give up all their goodies. And we just collect it. So 
if you want to see how many items this place gets, uh, I can just open this up. And anything that hasn't gone into the chests will just tumble out of here. And so we've been here for, what, a few minutes? And, I mean, look at all that. There's just... There we go. I think that's about the extent of it. Oh, no, a little bit more. Um, that's a lot of items right there. I don't even know how many items that is. What is that? Uh, it says 200 entities, but... Yeah, well, it's, it's because they're all joined up, so that's that's not a good way to tell. But the, this is the, the collection area upstairs. Uh, the reason why we have some slabs here is because we are in a slime chunk. Uh, probably why I saw the slime downstairs. There must be some other portion of it. I guess it's below the floor where I don't have slabs. Uh, but, as I say, this was the first Prismarine farm that I made. I didn't really do much in terms of design myself. It was just pretty much a straight rip, uh, you know, with a couple of modifications just to make it sort of my own and, and do it the way that I like. But this was the very first one that I built in and found on this server, and it served me pretty well because it's it produces enough prismarine and enough fish uh, to last forever. The, the one thing that's a little bit bad about this is that you don't get cooked fish, you just get raw fish, so you have to have some furnaces around just to cook up the fish. And I believe the fish are in these last three chests here, or last two? Yeah, just two two sets of chests for fish, but I mean, that's more fish than I'll, I'll use in years. And the rest of it is just completely full because I've, I've run this farm a number of times. So that's uh, that's the OP Prismarine farm. And maybe it would be a good idea just to take a quick, quick flight outside so you can kind of see around uh, the area and what it's like. Let's just fly through the water wall here, up out through the top. It's nighttime. So there's the top of the farm. It's all half slabbed. Uh, here's the wiring coming up from downstairs because hey, if you want to push a button you need to have something that'll allow it to work but as as you can see there's not that much in terms of uh, just you know spawnable spaces around here there's this is probably the closest island and I think it's I don't know it's close to 100 blocks away maybe a little over 100 blocks away so when you're in the farm uh, none of this should really should really matter the only thing that matters is what's underground in the caves and if you look carefully when you're flying around you'll you'll notice a few things like this where I've spotted you know a bit of a cave in and I went down there found some caves did some caving lit it all up uh, there's a number of little spots like that around uh, yeah so that's just uh, that's what you have to do if you want to improve your your spawn rates you need to make sure that, that nothing else can spawn because that uh, That'll take away from your mob cap and, and take away from the creatures that you want to spawn, which in this case are guardians. And here we can even sit here on the side and kind of see how this works. Uh, you'll notice at the top here, the dispensers. The One faces this way and one faces that way. Uh, and that just allows me to, you know, cut down on the number of dispensers that I need rather than having a full set of dispensers on the ceiling. Uh, I can just do it on the edge. And so when this fires, some water goes that way, some water goes this way. It uh, doesn't end up making water sources, so I can turn it off. It, it works out really quite well. And <laughs> well, I forgot about this. This was my little hiding in the corner breathing chamber. So you could sit back here and kind of watch. What, oh, well, er, we're crushed, so we're not in it. Yeah, so you can kind of sit back here and, and stay, uh, stay breathing. Just watch what goes on. Interesting place. But that's, uh, that's about all there is really to show uh, on this farm. And as I say, before I leave... I'm going to turn off the Guardians, and I will toggle off the collection before we go, uh, just once the Guardians stop falling, because I don't want to, I don't want to have all these minecarts disappear, and I have had that happen before. So, we're just going to wait for a second or two longer, that should be the end of it, there we go. The water's pretty much all gone, and it does take a long time for that water to drain. There's only four blocks of water, but it takes a long time for it to drain. Uh, and we might even be having some rendering issues here because I believe that water's all gone. Let's see if we can take a, a quick float up. There we go. So here we are in our little chambers. Uh, not much else to say here, guys. It's it's a nice farm. I, I like the way it looks, but uh, this one was not my design. And so, of course, I wanted to do a farm that was all my own design. And... The other reason why I wanted to do uh, another farm was because this one has no possibility for gaining XP. And Guardians are actually worth a fair amount of XP. So I wanted to do another farm somewhere. And as it turned out, uh, fairly close to main base, there is another, uh, or there was another temple. 
Uh, it has since been removed and turned into an XP Guardian farm. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop through this little portal here, head to the nether hub. I mean, it's, it's not really a hub. It's just back here. And we're going to take a little train ride. Choo-choo! <laughs> come get me. You can't come get me, can you? You're way too slow. Look at him. Look at him back there. Just wondering, hey, who hit me? Which one of y'all kicked me? Oh, well. Maybe they'll stay angry. Maybe they'll come after us. You never know. But uh, this is a fairly short ride here. And sorry, guys, that I'm not uh, using my recording software to cut scenes and chop them together. But uh, I've still got a little bit to do uh, in terms of learning about that sort of thing. And over time, I'm going to get better. I will definitely get better. But for the moment, I just I want to be able to put out a video. And even if I have to waste, you know, a minute or two in the middle of the video just zipping back and forth, it's still a good chance for me to sort of sit back and gab and just say whatever's on my mind. Uh, and in this case, there's not much on my mind aside from Prismarine Farms because that's what I want to show today. Uh, and I hope that you like that last Prismarine Farm. Uh, it's really effective. It's a, it's a great design. If, if you have a server with a lot of people, uh, that's probably the best design to go for in terms of just getting uh, Prismarine blocks and, and the drops from the Guardians. Uh, it's a very effective farm. And, uh, you know, kudos to the, guy, the guys at ZipCrowd that uh, came up with it. Uh, obviously... Uh, very, very good technical Minecrafters. Uh, I'm nowhere near as good. But what I want to do is I want to run past the portal back to the main base. And I'm going to run past the portal over here. Uh, this is the portal to the OP Slime Farm. With a little <laughs> slime banner over there. And just over this way, this is where we get to our next Prismarine Farm. And you'll notice in here there's a lot of half sliding that's been done. And later on, I'll show you some of the farms we have down in the nether and above the nether uh, and why we have so many half slabs placed everywhere. Uh, that's very important for the spawning as well. Anyway, here, here we go. This is the XP Prismarine farm. And as I say, the, the idea behind this farm was just to get some XP in the overworld so I didn't always have to go to the nether, to the zombie pigman farms to, you know, to, to get XP to sort of fix my tools or fix my, my armor. And here we are. Uh, again, uh, same sort of thing. This one's got the water wall. Uh, and I really like the way that this, this worked out. Uh, you know, you've got uh, water flows for eight blocks. And so there's one, two, three. All right, so that's six times eight. That's 48 across. Uh, so, you know, the, the sea temples themselves are 50 by 50. Uh, the spawnable area is 50 by 50. And the, the big sort of chalice or concentrator, whatever you want to call it, the, the catching area here is 48 by 48 when it's all done. So it, it actually worked out great. It gives you just enough room to be able to sort of use an elytra and oy, if I can not stand where I'm not supposed to, I just want to fly. I just want to fly. There you go. So you can fly out of there. You can land on the roof. You can see how it all works and how it all looks. This is just the water wall, um, which I think is a great idea for doing these farms. And you might notice here there's, there's a number of uh, the slime blocks. And that's because instead of, you know, ripping up the sea floor and, and digging up all of the gravel that's there or going and decimating an entire uh, desert somewhere in Minecraft, you know, I, I didn't want to have to do all that. I didn't want to have to go and collect all of this gravel to, to put up a, a wall around here. So I used slime blocks instead. And that's because... This farm came after the OP slime farm, and I had lots and lots of the slime blocks that I could use to to build my sort of perimeter here. And it's uh, I, I would advise that it's they're really good because you can break them super quickly. Um, you know they're pretty much free, and it it made building this farm nice and easy. Uh, but again, this, this farm, you know, this one's my design. I just decided to do the sort of giant catcher here uh, with the same kind of. Uh, spawning pads or spawning areas that we have in the prior farm, uh, a little bit different. Uh, I did, I did this sort of spike method where let, let's see whether we can swim up here a bit. Oop, gotta back up a little bit more. If we swim up to the top, you'll be able to see into the spawning chambers. Uh, and I've got these little sort of vertical spikes coming down, and that was because uh, I wanted to have the the downward flow of water help to push out the guardians, but. Uh, I don't think the Guardians are really affected by the downward flow anymore, so maybe it would be a good idea just to rip all of these things out and just get more spawnable areas. Uh, 
I know that if, if I jumped in there, it would be really hard for me to swim up because the downward flow of water does affect me as a player, but it, it doesn't seem to affect the Guardians anymore, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. And here you go. You can sort of see underneath the spawning area, we know we have a bunch of uh, fence gates, and they're all open so that things can fall through them. And what they do is they just kind of fall into these water streams, uh, and they hit the edge, which just has regular fences along the edge. And the reason why those fences are there is because you can see that the the guardians they they get to the edge of the of the fence and they just kind of hop over it. They just boop and just make a quick jump and they're over it. Uh, if if I had just glass there, uh, like I do with the rest of the, the sort of catchment area, um, the the guardians come down and instead of just flowing off the edge of the water, they they want to stay in the water. So they kind of try to back up and it uh, they they're really hesitant to to sort of go over the edges, but uh, putting fences around the edge underneath the water uh, as your very last block of water really seems to help uh, get them to jump or get them to go over without backing up and fighting the water. Uh, and that really allows you to get these guys in here a lot more quickly. And personally, um, I think this is a pretty good design. You know, there's a lot of people that have come up with ideas where you can take the Guardians and, and ship them off to the Nether through a Nether portal and you can go and kill them there. Uh, but again, the, one of the reasons why I made this farm was because I wanted to be able to get XP without going to the Nether. So let's go down inside and see what this farm looks like. Uh, from here, you can see there's five layers of lava, uh, and that just seemed to be the best way to get these guys to take uh, just enough damage before they got into this chamber down here. And this is the little killing chamber. Uh, underneath this floor, there are minecarts with hoppers, which are on top of hoppers. Uh, and then you know, I used a piston to push the blocks in on top of them so that the hoppers are actually buried, or the minecarts with hoppers are buried inside these blocks. Uh, and that's why when these guys die, you don't really see their... Uh, you see their stuff kind of pop for a second, but then it just disappears into the floor. Uh, and that's a great way to do it, because that way you don't have kind of an ugly set of hoppers here. And hoppers also have the, the slight issue where, you know, they're deeper in the middle than they are at the edge, and things can kind of fall into the middle and get stuck. Uh, you know, if there's creatures, they don't really want to get out of there. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered, I don't think, for this particular farm. Uh, but I just don't like the look of it. I, I like the, the nice, clean look here a lot better. Uh, so this, this, is, this is it. This is the, the whole area. Um, over here, we've got the... Shulker Brewer for 1.12. This was the first Shulker Brewer I made. In fact, it was my kind of prototype. And, you know, this is the whole reason why I came up with the idea of the Shulker Brewer is because I wanted to be able to take these potions uh, and, you know, be able to kill guardians with potions. Uh, this thing's going to start brewing new ones. There we go. It's got three back in there, and we've got the next set brewing along. Uh, so it takes 11 seconds to brew three of the instant damage two potions with this design of a brewer, uh, which is really good because that way uh, you can get XP much more quickly. So to kick this farm into XP mode, we push this button here, and that lets some water come out of two dispensers there. And now as the guardians fall, they, they get put out because they're on fire when they fall through, but they get put out and they land on the water, uh, and guardians are happy in water. So they just kind of sit down and relax in their little warm bath there after their slate cooking and uh, they just they just hang out and what I do is I grab a potion of harming throw it through the little hole switch to my diamond sword which of course the diamond sword's got looting on it uh, and that's good because that way you can get some of the the rare drops and I'm gonna wait for a second and you can hear a whole bunch more coming down there then you can sort of see them flapping through the the lava there uh, and as soon as you do a kill, you'll get a lot more of these guys kind of spawning, and they fall down pretty quickly. You know, it's this farm isn't about maximum efficiency, it's not about maximum number of drops. Uh, it was really about just getting getting some Prismarine and being able to get some XP. Uh, XP is what I wanted, and I didn't want to do, uh, you know, a, a straight copy of somebody else's design. I didn't like the idea of people using swords and... and uh, cobwebs to sort of hold you in place while you attack these guys and they attack you back with their thorns. I just wanted to, to use potions because potions are easy. You know, you don't have to do anything. Again, all these potions will be full again. There's the, the box full. So 
you know, it, it takes very, uh, very little time to, to brew up enough potions to get massive amounts of XP here. And if I keep on doing this just for a little bit, you'll probably notice a slowdown in, in the frame rate because the number of XP orbs that you get uh, is actually fairly high. You get uh, quite a few XP orbs in there. And you might wonder to yourself right now, well, how do you get the XP out of there? I know there's trapdoors. Maybe those move somehow. And yes, they do. They move. Uh, I keep those there because I don't want bits of prismarine or cooked fish or things to come bumping out of there. Uh, so what I do, when I want my XP, and you can see there's enough of a slowdown to let me know it's, it's time to collect the XP. So let's switch over to uh, our semi-broken down in pickaxe. We'll push that button there, and here comes the XP. And the nice thing is it, it comes out in a really, really uh, tight bunch like that. So I've got over 400 XP orbs right now. And maybe if I run around a bit, you'll be able to see it a bit better. Uh, but there's a lot of XP there. <laughs> Lots and lots of XP. If I go up the stairs, I'll leave some of it behind. And, well, I mean, you can see there, there's... That's lots of XP. Lots and lots of XP. Uh, certainly enough to fix tools. And, in fact, what have I done? I've done... Uh, two levels, maybe almost three levels, uh, at level 100. So, the XP here is quite good. You can, you can get a lot of XP here. Uh, certainly enough to fix anything with mending, uh, fix all your tools. And you know, I only few or only threw a few potions there, uh, and yeah, it's a it's a great little farm for for XP. Uh, when it's an XP mode, it's it's quieter, and once again, you can get the the rare drops from these guys if you throw a potion and you switch over to your looting sword. Now, as soon as I do that, we'll run over here to the elevator, and maybe you'll see a clownfish or a salmon, or maybe a pufferfish kind of go up. Uh, they are called rare drops because they are pretty rare, but using a looting sword really helps. And you can hear the noise, these guys are just loading up again. And it doesn't take too long for the, the whole chamber to load. Uh, just about by the time that all of the items have cleared, uh, we're getting right down to the end here. Only one elevator is going. So as soon as that's done, we're pretty much ready to go. And. I can come over here, push the button again, just get that last little bit of XP. You know, even with that, there's still almost 100 uh, XP orbs. So again, this this is a, a really decent farm. If you're looking for a nice way to get XP just to, to fix your tools or maybe get a couple of levels quickly, uh, I think this is a, a good design for a farm. I, I like the way it looks. Uh, I like the way it's it's functioning. Um, I was certainly happy that it kind of inspired me to make the Shulker Brewer because that's been... That's been a great little brewer, and uh, I'm really proud of that one. And if we go back up top here, when we're in XP mode, you have very, very few guardians falling through. Uh, in fact, the only guardians that'll fall through are guardians that come after we get an entity cramming death down here. And you can see right there, there's a little, little puff of smoke. And that just lets you know that the entity cramming is causing some of these guys to, uh, to die. And when a couple of them die, then there's space, you know, in the mob cap for a couple more to spawn. And so that's what happens. But it, uh, it ends up being nice and slow here. Uh, and also, uh, one of the ideas behind this, this water curtain or water wall here is if we hop into our little minecart, uh, then we're just close enough to the edge. You know, it's about uh, 10 blocks away or so. Uh, but that way, if there are squid that have spawned near the, the water wall, like this guy here. As you go by, he begins to swim, and then there's a good chance that he can fall through. Uh, and I know that right now we're, we're not seeing a huge amount of squid spawning, uh, but, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Uh, and if I didn't have these lights right here, I would probably get less squid spawning because this whole area fills up with bats. Uh, you might think that these lights are to prevent spawns uh, down here, but uh, at least on the Java edition, you don't get uh, regular mobs spawning within the bounding box of a sea temple. So I could take out all of these lights and I still wouldn't have creepers or spiders or skeletons or anything showing up, uh, but I would have a lot of bats uh, because the roof is covered, it's a big open area, the game kind of sees it as sort of a cave, and so I would just get 30 or 40 bats all floating around here and roosting make a noise and drive me crazy because they don't give me anything good. Uh, you know, at least the 
the squid can give you ink sacs, uh, which are important. So that's uh, that's pretty much all I can say for the the XP Prismarine farm here. This this one I'm pretty happy with. Uh, it's been a great addition because you know if I need to fix up some tools, I can just come down here, throw a couple of potions, push a button, get some experience, fix up all my tools, and once again I'm ready to go with you know perfectly good stuff. I just want to see over here. Do I have more clownfish? No more clownfish. I don't know about the puffer fish and the salmon. Yeah. So that is that is the farm down here. As you can see, there are a fair amount of ink sacs that show up here. Um, you know, it's not super quick right now, uh, but that's just because there's not a lot of uh, squid around the edge. But they they do show up uh, during the daytime. But sometimes you can see you know quite a few of the squid around. Uh, sometimes they spawn far away. Sometimes they spawn right up close to the water wall. Um, and that's, again, you know, that's why I put this little minecart here, was just to be able to sit in here and, you know, if I was running low on the ink sacks, I could sit in my little minecart, take a little trip around, and just wait for some squid to fall. And, I guess, listen to minecart sounds as well. Uh, but that's it. That is about it, guys. I don't think there's much else I can show off uh, when it comes to the, the OP Prismarine farm or the XP Prismarine farm. They're... You know, but by now I'm sure people have seen what Prismarine farms look like. Uh, and I'm going to fly back over to base here. Actually, let's go back to... Let's go back to the, the slime farm. Because that's always a fun place to visit. I like the slime farm. Uh, and it's just over here. It's not far away at all. There we go. There's the little... There's the dojo. And we can come down here. Try to get a good landing on the roof. Maybe hop down. Oh, I was going to hop into the hot tub, but... yeah. Didn't quite make it. And now that we're here, uh, nothing else has been around, so there's, of course, nothing nothing spawning at the moment. Uh, but it will do. And I'm just going to go in here, have a quick snooze, make sure it's daytime, because, hey, who wants to record at night? Nobody wants darkness and stars. Well, maybe stars, but not so much darkness. And, of course, if it's a light sky and there's stars, you'd never see them, because the stars are still there. You just can't see them in the day. Um... Well, maybe not in Minecraft. Maybe they are actually gone during the day. I don't know. I didn't make this game. I just play it. I play it because I like it, and it's fun. And uh, here we go. Here's the, the slime farm just beginning to warm up. I can see one slime coming up. And in just a few minutes, there will be a lot more. Uh, because uh, I have uh, gone through and, you know, lit up as many caves as I can find. Uh, this has turned... This little slime farm into a very effective slime farm, and I'm really proud, really happy with it. Uh, if you haven't seen the last video, go back and watch the last one. It'll give you an idea how it works and you know how I made it, why it why it works the way that it does. But it's a uh, this is a great slime farm. And I think on that little ding dong doorbell note, I'm going to sign off here, guys, because I don't need to sit here and watch a million slime show up. I've seen it before, and so have you if you watched the last video. But uh, that's it, guys. I think I'm just going to walk over here, stand on the little bridge, take a quick peek around, and say goodbye. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Maybe the next one will be a little bit more exciting. I know this one was a bit dull. Uh, not much to show off with uh, Prismarine Farms, but I just kind of wanted to show you uh, what the Prismarine Farms are, are like and how I made them and maybe a little bit of thoughts behind it. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to sign off now, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.